only on last night, but this morning twice to give us instruction. He told us to repent. Last night the word came forth to repent. We need to be a people that repent. Not only that, God has chastened the house. If, it, if this does not apply to you, I'm not talking to you. But if it applies to you, take heed to what thus saith the Lord, not what Cynthia is saying. In Exodus 19 and 5, and see, I'm going to give you scripture for those that might have a little problem with what comes out of this mouth. I'm going to back it up with scripture, then I'm going to speak what God has said speak in addition to this. And some people need the foundation. In Exodus 19 and 5 from the King James, it says, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, obey his voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. But in order for us to be that peculiar treasure, we have to do one thing first, obey. And in obeying, that means submit. Submit to the authority that has been given charge over us, even in the absence of our leader. She may not be here physically, but in spirit she should be in each and every one of us. God is saying that we need to learn how to become mature enough to obey his word. His word was left over this house by way of our apostle. She allowed someone to step in her stead because God told her heart that's what it's supposed to be. In essence, before she left, she said, well, the cat's away, don't let the mice play. Sometimes the mice are having a good time. And they don't like the fact that when you get called on the carpet, so to speak, or checked when you're wrong, you know when you're wrong. Now, we're all adults. Amen? Anyone in here outside of the children under 18, you're all adults. We all know right from wrong. And as was stated this morning in Sunday school, we have pastor in the wrong place. Anytime we show up to church for pastor, we're, we have her in the wrong place. We should show up for the God on the inside of her. Anytime she leaves instruction, we should follow that instruction based on the God that's on the inside of her. God desires so much for this house to grow. Each and every one of us has a charge and a paraclete of nations that we are charged to keep cover over. But our nations cannot come forth. They will not bear fruit until we get in line. And everyone has to get in line because there's, there's a lot of jealousy and envy and, and backbiting that goes on when one goes up and everyone doesn't go up with them. So God is giving us a chance to get right. In Exodus, that speaks of a leaving where everybody left under the guise of Pharaoh. They had to get up out of there because Pharaoh wasn't treating them right. But what happens in the body of Christ is that we become complacent with the garlic, the leeks, and the cucumbers and onions. We want to eat that stuff as opposed to gorging, I won't say gorging, but indulging on the manna that God has given us. God has given us such a strong manna that will sustain us in times of trouble, tribulation, in times of famine, but we do not, we reject the manna from heaven and we seek after the leeks, the garlic, the onion, and the cucumbers, like we want a salad out the garden. But it is not enough to sustain us. As a matter of fact, if you eat enough of that in the natural, you're going to stink. You do. Eat, eat a bunch of garlic and some onion. And cucumbers will give you gas. So you're going to stink from both ends. And in the presence of the people. So when we become complacent in a place that God has called us out of, we start to stink in his nostrils. God is calling us so that our prayers are a sweet savior to his nostrils. He desires us to follow him no matter who he decides to dwell inside. He should be in each and every one of us. But it's the God in us respecting the God in our leader. It's the God in us 
respecting the God that gives us breath and life. Is that God in us? A replication of the ref or the reflection of God in heaven? Or is it the little G-O-D God? The God of you. The God of life. Your life and your circumstances. The thing that you have made an idol. God is calling us to a level and a place in this house that we no longer seek for complacency. He's calling us to make an exodus out of that land of Egypt. Egypt being a place of bondage and enslavement. We do not have to physically be enslaved in order to be bound. Our minds, as the prophet said, need to be changed. We need to realize who we are and whose we are in God. We need to respect the God on the inside of each and every one of us. Prayer did not go too long. And I'm going to go there. Y'all going to get mad. Oh, well, half of you don't like me, no way. Prayer did not go too long. Prayer wasn't long enough. Because if it was too long for you, then it's not, then you're not praying long enough in your private time. The prayers that went out were the prayers that, and she wasn't, she wasn't even at uh, uh, Prophet's uh, ministry last night. A lot of what he said, a lot of what the prophet that came up here this morning and spoke, he wasn't in Sunday school, but it was still said. And obviously it's being repeated in this house for a reason. God is calling us to another level of accountability and maturity. Now, whether you like it or not, you're in the house and you're being called to another level of accountability and maturity. You're being called to pray more, to pray harder, to pray more earnestly. You're being called to stand up before the people no matter what they think. And I hear the thoughts even now. See, I don't throw the darts back. I'm just destroying them. That's just it. I'm not going to throw something back at you for you to send it back seven times more fortified and I wake up in the night and a demon on my chest. No, I'm going to destroy it and hand you over to the hand of God because he can whoop your tail better than my thoughts ever would. So into the hand of God go those that have issue with prayer and long prayer. Into the hand of God will go those that have issue with a rebuke. Into the hand of God will go those that have issue with becoming subject and submitting themselves to divine authority. Into the hand of God you go. Because it's not for me to condemn or judge you, but to release you to his will. But he, he does that with a warning. Because in every instance, in every situation, we've been given a time to repent. A time over and over and over again. I don't care what house we go into, that one word comes back over and over again. Repent, 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 repent. Why hasn't the whole house, and it's not whole house gone forth to do that. And it's not that you're doing something so visibly sinful. It's those thoughts. The, I wish you would hurry up and sit down. Where's the prophetic in that? The prophetic in this is that you're being warned. He gave Jezebel an opportunity to what? Repent. And when she didn't, how many kids we got here? They threw the hoe from the window. And you become a whore or as they say in, on the block, a hoe, when you decide to go whoring after other gods. Yeah. Repent. And what nothing left of her. The dogs ate her and booped her into the fields. And this is what will happen to those who do not repent. Anytime he brings it back, he's giving you a space and a time to repent. He's calling for total repentance of your heart, your mind, your actions. Those things that you think you have hidden, repent. He needs you to repent for all that mess, 
The stuff that you think you're going to talk about, I declare and decree that your tongue will cleave to the roof of your mouth. You walk out of here and say one ill thing about the ministry ever again. Ever again. That the very death that those that desire to speak over this house becomes their lot. Because we shall live and not die. We are a people of purpose and a divine call. We are a people that have a destiny that God has given to us. And pastor is here in the sense, in the context of the spirit. And how dare anyone go against what God has ordained to be order in this house. God is still calling the house to repent and to exit from your Egypt. Amen. Amen. Is there another word? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> you, Akil, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My God. Uh, Amy Matthew 18. Verse 6, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom the offense comes. <laughs> About a week ago, I was pulling into the parking lot at Target, and as I passed a Jeep, as I was coming up the lane, I passed this Jeep, and it backed up right into my quarter panel. Oh, if y'all knew me and how much I love my car, it hurt. <laughs> it hurt, and I got out, and I looked at it, and all I, I just had my hands, like all my, you, you can't even speak for a second. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember the look on the man's face. He didn't say, are you okay? He didn't say, is everything all right? He, he just, he just kind of stood there. And he looked at me and he said, you know, I'm not so sure this is my fault. Hold on to that for one minute because he said, the Lord spoke and he said, Cain is roaming the land. The spirit of Cain is roaming the land. Murder, hate, envy, the killing of one's brother. And the blood is crying from the land. The blood of our brother is crying from the land because even as that man stood and looked at what he had done how often have we stood and looked at the damage we have inflicted upon another person and stood there and said you know what i don't think that's my fault whether it was an accident or not you are still accountable we have been infected and affected by the lack of accountability that is roaming the land. And he said, oh God. The inability to accept accountability is nothing more than pride. Pride is causing us to kill our brothers and sisters. Causing us so instead of saying, you know what, baby, I'm so sorry about what I said last week. I wasn't really sure if I hurt your feelings. But if I did, I'm sorry. I love you. Do you hear me? I love you. I love you. I'm so sorry. When I walked in the other day, I bumped into you. And I didn't know what happened. But I don't want the spirit of offense to take root. Because I'm sorry. And I love you. Because we're the he that is that one that causes the offense. Not the one who takes the spirit. The one who causes the offense. It is better for he that a millstone be hung around his neck and he be thrown into the sea and drowned. Pride. 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 
pride. Pride is the root of all sin. All sin. And if you're sitting in pride, you are sitting in sin. And if you're sitting in sin, I don't care how bad your prayers are. I don't care how high you jump. I don't care how fast you run. I don't care how good you sing. I don't care how high you fast. I don't care. Without repentance, you can't get into the room. If you're sitting in pride, you're sitting in sin. And if you're sitting in sin, the stench of what you're sitting in won't let you in. And here's another example he gave me. The other day I was driving down the street. I saw these dudes walking with a lawnmower. You ever see those really big lawnmowers? Those big, bad lawnmowers are like huge. And you're like, oh my God, they can mow like the whole lawn in like two minutes flat because they're huge. They're these bad looking machines. I, I, I like tools. I'm, I'm not the typical chick. I was like, man, that's a bad lawnmower. And I saw them coming up the hill and they're walking and they turned around to go in the gate and they proceeded to back it in. <laughs> but when they got to the post, it didn't fit. <laughs> I was like, look at that. It doesn't matter how bad your, your tools are. It doesn't matter how good you got it. If you can't fit in, you can't get in. And without repentance, you're not getting in. We've been called for. We've been called out. The Lord has said, repent, repent, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, repent. For the kingdom of God. I am the kingdom of God. I am the kingdom of God. I am, you are, you are, you are, you are, repent. And as a prophet, I get caught up in the pretty prophecies and the soft spoken but empty words. And I've been asking God to allow me, let me exhort the people. Let me encourage the people. Let me edify the people. Let me be one of those. Let me be one of the, please God, can I be one of those? To edify means to warn of impending danger. It means to warn. And he said, how much better do you warn them than to let them know what's coming? Not that they fall, but that they may stand when it hits and it's coming. And he's warning us. And without repentance, we won't be in the right place at the right time. And when it hits, we will not stand. My God. Correction, when given in love, is edification. He chastises those he loves. And I am grateful that he still takes the time. I don't think you understand it. Because he could turn his face away. All the hell that you've gone through. Everything that you've experienced, every ounce of the blood you sweated and the tears you cried was with his hand upon your life. What happens when he moves? Yes, this is a warning. And I'm thanking him for it because it means I still have time to be ready. This song has been in my spirit all morning. Oh, how he loves me. Let the song came on. Oh, how he loves me. And before I go any further, I don't allow the enemy to work my mind. I learned that long ago. I would apologize to people just for what I thought. And that would always be embarrassing. But I did it anyway because I got to sleep. And I got to eat. So, Providence Adrian, I had that thought too. That you are going a very long time. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Because we got to go full in. We got to go in. Is there another one?
I repent. I thought you was going long. But that's because I'm always in a place of let's get it done in order. But I repent because we have to allow God to have his way. So I repent to you. But again, it's because of my, and I'm not trying to justify it. I need y'all to pray for and that because I'm a person of let's get it done. Y'all know me. I'm throwing away. I'm doing away. I'm, I'm just a person of order. So that don't make it right, though. So I repent to you. Is there anyone else? Because after we've, we're done offending Providence Adrian, the Spirit of the Lord is an offense in us. And there's a disconnection that takes place. Because the Spirit of God in us has to be connected to the Spirit in heaven. So His will may be done. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. No connection, no power, no glory. So I'm going to bind the Holy Spirit this morning. I'm going to bind it up. I'm going to... Hey, Karabastienda, Raboshiende. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Abakas. Young Dodabokoshienda. I bind you up in the name of Jesus. Every root and every fruit, every link to the spirit of hardiness, everything that will come. Hey, God, I thank you to kill the people of God because of tradition and religion. I bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. I paralyze it. I pulverize it right now. Oh, Father God, it shall become ashes. Ashes. It will never come back together again in the name of Jesus. And I lose humility. That God would rise in us and every enemy in us will be scattered in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Glory to God. Is there another word? Because I also came with the mindset that I was coming home, going home early too. So is there another word? Does anybody want to say something to anyone that needs to be said so that they can begin to grow? I got a big mouth this season. In the man of God's tongues, when you were speaking in tongues, God gave me the interpretation of your tongues. And I heard in your tongues God saying, Loose your soul. Loose your emotions. Loose your mindset. And then you said something else where you said, we're waiting on God. But God waiting on us. Faith without works is dead. The scripture before it says, the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works dead is dead. A lot of times we get, and I'm, I'm going to tell you about my week, okay? Elder, sometimes I don't like you. <laughs> I pleaded with God. I said, God, please don't let her, because of my mindset, please don't let her say, I have to pray. And every time, you're going to pray. So, even in the prayer, my breakthrough came. Even in the prayer, my healing came. My strength came. I had the worst week ever. But God is awakening my praise. That no matter where I find myself, that I can praise a God that will come in my situation. No matter if man is there, no matter if my friend is there, but I'm finding out about my friends and I'm finding out about men. Oh my God. They will leave you in the point of your own destruction. I believe it's in Ezekiel where it says, I walk by 
And I saw you in your blood. I saw you struggling in your blood. Okay, God, yes. No, I was not done praying. Oh, God. A lot of times we get so caught up on what we're going through and how it's affecting us that we are not speaking life to our brothers struggling in their blood. We're forgetting about them because that's why the spirit of pride needs to die. The spirit of pride needs to die. And a lot of us say in our minds, oh, I don't struggle with the spirit of pride. Just as prophet as Maria said, you know you have offended someone. It might have not been this morning. It might have not been yesterday. But can we look back on the times that we caused our brother to stumble? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it because it is in the room. It is time for us to allow God to change our minds. So many of us, me first, say that we trust God. But when things are not turning out the way that we think they are, we move ahead before God. We don't wait for God to do what needs to be done. And then we might have started right here when God told us to be still and see the salvation of God. We have moved ahead of God. Now we all the way back here and we got to get to that place again. Before all these things begin to break out in my life, in my marriage. God had to take my level of trust. Because I really wasn't trusting him. Until things began to happen in my home. It's time for us. As the body of Christ has greater works to stop Jesus. It's time for us. I hear God saying that we need to begin to look at one another. In the spirit. Yesterday I was sitting and I was doing some reminiscing concerning my marriage. I'm going to put it all out there. And God bless you, Elder Cynthia, because you be hitting some stuff in me. God used you to hit some stuff in me. And I began to confess to God and I said, God. I don't know my husband. I don't know him in the spirit. But I know him by his flesh. And I begin to confess and I begin to repent to God. And even in the repentance, a refreshing comes. Even when I want to stay in that place. The refreshing comes because God can do all things but fail and lie. I'm sorry. I ha- I have so much to say. It's just, uh, I-, I didn't want to come. I didn't want to come this morning. I 
I struggled all night and I was like, God, I don't want to go. God, I just want to walk away from everything. And then we'll have those people to say, is she still in that same place? Speak life to me, struggling in my blood. <laughs> Don't stab me while I'm down there. Don't speak death to me while I'm down there. You speak life to me as I speak life to you. Jesus. So, let me pass the mic because I can just keep going. But as I open up, I got a big mouth in this season. So, don't think that I'm just talking to be talking. I'm talking myself out of some stuff. I'm talking myself out of suicide. I'm talking myself out of going back smoking crack. <laughs> And Prophet Maria says something. <laughs> the offense, the offense, yes, it's going to come. But a lot of times we are offending people <laughs> just to offend them. That's another thing I hear God saying that we need to repent for. Those times when we spoke in those words out of our mouth in anger. Can I repent? Not only do I receive you, what you say to me, what you say, amen, but I also repent to you. Because <laughs> I don't say everything right myself. Amen. I don't say everything right myself. And I offend without even knowing about it to later on when you say something. Um, uh, Jesus. Okay, since we out here, we argue about just about dang near everything from the color of the, of the, of the sky, from the time, of whatever time it is today. If I say something, she says something else. But in the arguing, ah, Jesus, when the arguing, can I be honest with you? I never once stopped loving you. You hear me? I never once stopped loving you. Because I don't go below, I don't go below the belt. I don't say, no, I don't go below the belt because there's a whole lot of other things that run through my mind that I don't say. I keep it. Where we are, I'm not saying I'm right even in doing that. Because, because it's, it's like I said, it's how I said, it, it's what I said. Don't mean I'm right. It don't mean I'm right. I think I'm right, but it don't mean I'm right. Amen. I'll just be honest. But I never stop loving you. Never. Not once. Not once to speak. Not once when you were gone. Not, not once. I don't care what the argument was, what the outcome was. 
That's why whatever you do, I always support you. I support you even after you say, no, I don't want to do it no more. I'm still there supporting you. When you go do it again, guess what? You look up, guess where I'm going to be at? Where I've always been. It's where I've always been. That's where I am. Amen? So I just want to tell you now in front of everybody what you already should know, that I love you. Amen. And I'm still blessed that you're my wife. Amen. You can kiss your bride. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Oh, come on, magnify God in this place. Oh, come on, lift up the name of Jesus in this place. He's worthy of the praise. He's so worthy of the praise. He is so worthy of the praise. He is so worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Can I tell you, I dreamt this. Oh, Jesus, God, I thank you. It's needed that Ustream sees this. Because they need to stop seeing all the mess that constantly is going over the airways as it is now. Do y'all not know greater works is unusual? We are very, very peculiar. This is where service needs to be. They need to see a breakthrough. They need, see, they need to see marriages mended. They need to see people coming together. Regardless how you feel or how you act, they need to see this. Because in the dream, I was like, God, when we often hear repent, nobody want to remove. So how about we just get up and say it? Just I'll bring them forth. Because what you do, you make the enemy mad. When you actually move out of your comfort zone, comfort zone is pride. That's comfortable because I will sit and do nothing because I don't want to be embarrassed. That's why we, we don't see a lot of us move because I don't want to be embarrassed and plus I don't want to be found that I'm in the wrong. But it's needed for the very purpose and reason because your breakthrough is in the midst of when you do it. So it's good that they see this. They need to see this. It is a must they see this because a lot of churches don't do this. They want to go with the program. Get her done. They want to follow, they say it is subject to change, but they don't follow the subject to change. This is the subject to change. Greater works operate in a subject to change. That is our program. It is subject to change. At the beginning of service, it is subject to change. But this is what's needed in the church. Now, I'm going to say, if I have really offended y'all, please tell me. Don't let me go on and think, I, look, I repent. Because I don't got it all together. I'm not wrapped up too tight. Okay. I don't have it all together. I don't cross every T and dot every I. Listen. People have watched what I've gone through. And I have warned what I've gone through. And even in the midst of that, that could have been offense to somebody because they're looking for a strength pool and I couldn't do it. Because I was too busy concerned about my own things. I was too concerned about the situation and the problem. I didn't think anybody can help me because of what I was going through. So I had to come in with heaviness. 
with the mindset, oh, I'm just going to lift and do whatever. But in the midst of it, that was being a blockage to somebody else, including myself. So the ultimate thing, I had to go to him because he kept saying, repent. I'm like, who to repent to? He said, to me. Because you keep holding me in a spot. Okay. That's why this is keep coming, because we keep holding God locked up. And we say, God, I want you to free me, but you won't repent. So you can be free. So there were times I had to just lay out on the floor and cry out to him. Because of the simple fact, I was holding him in the same spot. He said, I want to do something for you, but you keep holding this up. You keep bringing this up. You keep bringing that 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 up. And he's like, why? When it's already done and fixed, but you keep holding me like I didn't do nothing. You keep holding me. You mad at me. I was like, yes. It's like, yes, I'm mad at you because everything that I'm going through, something could have happened to give me some sort of sign, something, but you still allowed it to happen. Yes, I'm mad. Because I go up and declare you got all power, but there was no power in the midst of this. There was no great move in the midst of this. There was no strength in the midst of this. So yes, I'm mad. And it's not by coincidence or accident that Job keep coming across the pulpit. Because he let Job get everything out he wanted to say. And so after you get done saying all you got to say, he said, are you done? Now let me talk. He said, let me talk now. Where were you? Where were you in the midst of what I did? Where were you in the midst of the things that I worked out? Where were you? So my offense was the one that I was so-called embracing, but in standing, I was standoffish. I was pushing away. See, that's what we don't like to say, it, but that's what we do in the midst of what we're going through. We push off the one that's trying to get in to help. He said, I'm right there, but you keep pushing me off and saying, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. He said, no, no, I'm right here, but I got it, I got it, I got it. He said, I can make it better. No, I got it, I got it, I got it. And he said, I'm right there, I'm right there. I could, I could make it all better, but you say you got it, so I'm going to let you have it. And then we get upset because when it falls all apart, then we want to come back to him. But God is not bringing this just to bash us upside the head. Maybe at times, yes, it's needed. But he's getting you to an understanding. I chose you. See, that's what they missed. I chose you. You didn't choose me. Because of the truth, the truth be told, you didn't want to choose me. You didn't want to choose me because you had your plan, your way of thinking, your word. You had everything all together. And knew that you was on top of the world. So 
So he lets you think you're on top of the world. I'm so glad you think that. Because I'm about to break up your top of the world and send forth my will in your life. Because he, God has the expected end for us. Everything is good in his eyesight, especially if he chose you. Everything, everything all adds up because he chose you. And everything works out. Everything that he allows. I had to come to the understanding that he allowed it. Everything, he allowed it. Because he wanted to get me to a place of trust in him. And stop getting in my own mindset that I'm going to be able to work it out when I have no means of working it out. When I really don't have it, I'm going to put it off as much as I possibly can because... And we need to stop procrastinating about things. Stop putting things off. When God gives us an assignment, go ahead and fulfill it and do it. Get it done. Because everybody has an assignment here because there's a point in time for you to be at a certain place. You are a part of an event you know nothing of. You don't know who's going to be there, but you need to be assigned in the mindset to continue to do what God said do. So when that event comes, you are in the right position to fulfill the event. Greater works, y'all are some awesome people. Okay, greater works. <laughs> y'all are some awesome people. Y'all are awesome in the Holy Ghost. Y'all are truly phenomenal. Do y'all not know it's y'all time? Oh my God. Oh, OMG. <laughs> it is y'all season, and, it's, and it's, this is needed. Everything that happened for t on today was needed to happen on today. And even the one that's going to still give the word is going to basically just confirm and just and give us a little bit more to help us through. Because she was set up for this assignment anyway. So that's why she's been bouncing it and all that up there. Yeah. But nevertheless, don't let, don't let. Don't let this discourage you. Don't let this be of a block to yourself. You are due to be free. It is due to you to be free. It is due to you to be free. He wants you free in mind, in your emotions, in your spirit. Because he called you for such a time as this. No, you're not too old. You're not too young. You are on the right course at the right time. And you are in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Because he needs you. Each one of us is different. I don't want us to be the same. If we're the same, we all need to leave. Because there's, that's not a uniqueness. That's, uh, that's something that's just gone bad. But each one of us are unique, and God loves each and every one of us. So if you may not have had the opportunity to say anything, don't leave out of here without saying what you need to say. Because you need to get free. We all need to get free. And continue to continue to be free. Because this is needed. Those people that's watching need to see people in the mindset that wants to be free. Not in the mindset to build up their own personal kingdoms. Not the mindset of constantly drawing from the people instead of pouring back into the people. So, I love y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Are we taking up an offering? At this time, we're going to go ahead and take up an offering. Oh, you know what? You go for it. Praise him. Now I'm 
not going beyond the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm going to just say, I'm not going beyond the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of God has been in this place today. And I, I just want to say that almost everybody that got up, even down to my scriptures, you have spoke them, the people who were obedient to get up. Wait, okay, I, I'm going to just tell y'all what my word was so y'all won't think I'm lying because y'all demonstrated it. My word was, you are complete in him. <laughs> God said, you are complete in him, lacking nothing. God said, you are perfect and entire, lacking nothing. All you got to do is seek him. Did you not seek him today? Now, if you was obedient and got up and began to pour out your soul, God is talking to you. Hallelujah. If you still got to do it, God is talking to you. God said you are complete and you perfect in him. It, outside of him, it's like filthy rags. But in him, you are complete. Come on and give God a hand. Yes, God. Oh, he that kind of God. He that kind of God. He will come before the word and conform the word. He that kind of God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to speak it like this. Be perfect. Be complete. Be entire. Be perfect in him. Be complete. Be perfect and be complete. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. I, I have a few things I want to say. I have a few things I want to say. And I'm going to sit down because I'm not going ahead of the Holy Ghost. And you people have got up. You have prayed you have spoke your deliverance. You have walked in your deliverance. And the only thing I want to do is just put the, put the little seal on it because God said you got to keep your deliverance from here. Amen? Amen. I, I, I got notes everywhere and I couldn't make it make sense, but now I know why. Glory to God. I, I want to start by saying, and I always say this when I get up, that this is a house of prayer. This church was founded on prayer. It is befitting that we got prayers that's in here. I'm talking about people who really pray. People who intercede. People who get up and take the mic and can't hardly let it go because they're pouring out. And as they're pouring out, God is pouring in. Glory to God. Now, I, I love this woman of God because she's my armor bearer. And she never knows how God is going to use her. But today, she was just obedient. Holla she didn't stick her feet in the mud. God used her to break up the atmosphere so that you could go forth. Had nothing to do with her. God wanted you to go forth. And if you sat there in a judgment, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Boom, you missed it. <laughs> you missed it. See, and then she went forth and got her own deliverance. I, now, 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 let, let me just be honest. I, I said, oop, don't tell too much. <laughs> I, I said, hold on, boo. You can't say everything in front of everybody because it ain't for everybody ears. Glory to God. But I thank God for the wisdom of God kicking in on the woman of God. She said, just enough. That would draw hubby up to repent to. I want to tell y'all, your marriage will never be the same. I speak it. I speak it in the atmosphere now. It'll never be the same. Matter of fact, from here on out, you're going up. You're going up. And it ain't going one without the other. You're going up together. Yes, God, I, I just got a few things to say, and I'm going to sit down because I'm not going above the Holy Ghost. That ain't nobody going to push me. <laughs> Praise him. I'm not going above the Holy Ghost. But I, I want to say this. Some of you didn't get your breakthrough because, number one, you're stubborn. 
you're stiff neck, and you in rebellion. You're rebellious. You don't want to get up and open your mouth because you think that you might be embarrassed because, you know what, I don't care who you are. If Joanna could get up and say, you know what, I was in that place, everybody in the building ought to get up. Because when we look at Joanna, we think she is about the closest thing to God. Come on, I'm going to tell the truth. She's about the closest thing to God. And if Joanna can get up and say, I was in that place, then we all need to get up and confess. Oh, confession is good for the soul. Confession is good for your soul. Glory to God. It empties you from all that crap and allows God to get in. Confession is good. Glory to God. So if you didn't get up, you missed it. And, and let me tell you, a lot of times what happens is, God wanted me to tell you one thing was to tell him everything. Be honest. We, we sometimes we're not honest with God. We're not honest with what he really needs to deal with. We're not honest. And we'll go to the left when he needs to deal with that thing on the right. Uh-huh. God deal with my marriage, but God, you really need to deal with uh, how I talk to my husband. Oh, see, but she was up here and she said it all. She didn't hold nothing back. So everybody that's sitting in judgment, glory to God, be careful. Because you're the offender now. You're the offender. The woman of God got free, but you're the offender. And God said, I'm going to deal with you today. I'm going to deal with you not only for what you say, but I'm going to deal with you because of your thoughts. Uh-huh, careful. I'll reiterate it, woman of God. I will reiterate because it's time that we stop killing our own people. We're killing our own people from the inside out with your strife. Hallelujah. And your jealousy, it come right from in here. Strife. Everybody carrying one conversation to the next. Everybody talking about everybody else. Guess what? It's strife. It's strife. And the enemy uses us to do it. Uh-huh. Oh, did you see so-and-so? Oh, I've been guilty. I, that's why I can talk about it. Uh, did you see so-and-so? Yeah, uh-huh. Did you see? Yeah, it is strife. And it'll cause that person that you talk to that might not be as strong as you think they are, to, it'll cause them to stumble. That's what God is talking about. Stop it. Stop it. God wants us to stop it because where he wants to take this house, it cannot be named among us. It cannot be named among us. And for as long as we've been together, the enemy has always used us against us. And now we're in a different place. God told me to tell you, reposition yourself. Reposition your thinking. Reposition your mouth and what comes out of it. Reposition yourself. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Give that real thing to God. The woman at the well. I want to give you an example that's in the word. The woman at the well. She was at the well. She was dipping. She was doing her thing, but she was talking to Jesus. Jesus was at the well. He was trying to give her living water. And she was trying to tell him, I need to know where to worship at. Jesus was like, I'm trying to give you me. It ain't about where you worship at. I'm trying to give you me. You're going all around the barn trying to figure out where to worship. Just worship. Just give him praise. Just give him worship right where you are. Make sure your mind is right. Make sure your heart is right. Worship. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a one accord in the house. Because we're going up. He can either continue to cut away. He can cut you away. He'll do it. You already know. Look at us. But it, it, it'll be a few faithful ones to God. Because God, I, 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 listen, he in my ear about every little thought. I know he in yours. I know he in yours. When you're wrong, say you're wrong. When you need to apologize, apologize. Uh-huh. That's what he's saying. Clear it out. Clear the mess out so I can pour me in. Clear it out. Mm-hmm. God said you complete in him. You complete in him. Don't have nothing to do with what you've done. What you can do or what you will do. Don't have nothing to do with your gifts. See, I'm repeating myself. I'm repeating because you've already said it. And you've done it. But if you didn't, you missed it. You missed it. God demonstrated himself. Mm. 
mm, mm, in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. God is dealing with the house's worship. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with worship in this house. Uh huh. Man of God, you needed to get free because as the leader, there is a place that God wants you to take the house in worship, but you got to go first. Mm. You got to go first like you never. Mm. I heard this in the spirit this morning. Practice. Practice the worship. Practice worshiping me because what you practice makes perfect. Don't worry about doing it like nobody else. God say you free. God say you free and in liberty worship me. And if you stand before the people and worship me, they'll come in. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because, see, we're going behind the veil. We're going in the holies of holy. We're going to the place that we've never been before in worship. We're going. Mm. Let me talk about worship just for two seconds. I'm almost done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Worship. There's two words, Old Testament, New Testament. New Testament, the word for worship. Mm. Old Testament, the word of wor for worship is, I'm going to spell it. Because if I say it, I'm going to tear it up. <laughs> yep, I'm going to tear it up, Jesus. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to tear it up. I don't, okay. P-R-O-S-K-U-N-E-O. -E it is called proskuneo, I think. It means to kiss and to bow down. To crouch closer to kiss to bow down or to crouch closer mm -hmm. Old Testament worship the Hebrew word is shakai to lower one's body and to stretch out with your face to the ground to honor to bow, to humbly ask in earnest, to show pure reverence. Now, the difference between those two words is one means to bow down and the other one means to kiss. If I am going to kiss the presence of God, I have to come where he is. And God is telling the house that we have to come up. Because we have to kiss the presence of God. There's no more uh, 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 land on, on, on the outside. We all have to go in. So that means there's no more, there's, there's no more sitting and looking to see who worshiping. If there's no more, there's no, ju no more judgmental, uh, oh, they ain't worshiping, they ain't really worshiping. I, yeah, they was with her last night. They was with him last night. I see they sin. they ain't real. Mm-mm. Worship. God wants to pull us in because it's in his presence that he is going to make us complete. It's in his presence that he is going to make us perfect. Worship. He's dealing with our worship. That's why sometimes it's so hard because the enemy come, he sit on us before we got here. I got pain. I don't feel like it. I'm depressed. Uh-huh. All that. God said it is time now. Your part is to press. Worship. I'm dealing with your worship. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with your worship because that's where I want to make you. I want to make you so that when the offenses come, you won't be offended. Mm -hmm. In worship, it's that place of safety. Go in. God said, go in. Go in. Go in to the throne room. He's been inviting us in for a long time, but we get to a certain point and we stop. You know why? Because our own mind stop us. Our own thoughts stop us. Uh-huh. Everything that we physically are stop us. But see, but to worship him, you have to worship him in the spirit. Worship him in the spirit and in truth. Not in your own mind. So God says, come in. In his presence is where I'm making you. Uh huh. I speak to you in even through your troubles and your trials. I'm speaking to you. You still hear my voice. Come in. 
Come in. I, I ain't stopped speaking. God said, I ain't stopped speaking to you. I've never stopped. I'm still speaking to you. I'm still in your ear. Some of you won't even move, and I'm telling you to do it. I'm telling you to go left. I'm telling you to go right, and you still won't move. Mm-hmm. But for those of you who will, mm-hmm. see, I don't, I, have, I don't have to deal with you a certain way. But for the hard-hearted and the stiff-necked and the stubborn, then I have to allow things. And when I allow things, you don't like it, and you misconstrue them for something else. But it's me. God said, it's been me all the time. It's been me. It's a hard place, and it's been me. I have allowed it. Hey, I'm stepping on my own to- toes. It's been me. It's been God. Mm-hmm. It's been God all the time. Because we get right here. And God say, cross over. How many times we go with every house he has brought us to a place in the spirit and we get right here. I've been watching this. We get right here and we turn around and go back. I can't go there. I I don't want God to open up that part because that part is going to hurt. That part is going to deal with the essence of who I am. And that part is going to deal with my ugliness. That part is going to deal with the part about me that I don't like. I don't want the mirror. I don't want God to look at that part. But that's the part that you need God to look at. That's the part that you need God to deal with. That's the, that's the part that you need God to take you through. Perfect, perfect and entire, wanting nothing, complete in my mind. I'm, I'm, I need to be complete in my mind, so I need to stay in the place, in the spirit. And God say, get up, and you won't get up. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Perfect and entire and complete in him. Glory to God. And God say, I want you to lay in the word. I want you, I want you to play the word in your ear. I, want, I don't want you to take your eyes from it. Don't let your eyes depart from the word of God. And you won't do it. We allow the outside things. We allow the things to come. We allow those things to come and distract us from where God wants us to be. Because sometimes we think we already got it. Uh huh. We already got it. We already doing it. Uh, we got that word. We know that word, but we don't know him. We don't know who he is. We don't know who he really is mm-hmm, to us. We know who he is for that moment, and we can say it out of our mouth. But can we walk in it? Can we walk in it? Can we walk in his healing? Can we walk in his deliverance? Can we walk in it? So God says, seek me. Jeremiah 29 and 13 says, if you seek me, you will find me. Mm-hmm. But you got to, but you got to seek me past what you used to doing, past how you used to do it. Seek me. God said, if you would seek me in those areas, seeking me means open up yourself to God. Open up that area that it hurts. Oh, yes, yes. You know what? I'm, I have lied. I'm a liar. I struggle with lying. Yes, I'm, I'm jealous. I carry the spirit of jealousy. It's in my family line. I, you know what? It's a old Hank. It been sitting in my family for years, but 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 it stops here. Uh, I, we, no no more competition. shanda. No more strife. shanda. And I will see it's not gonna come from me because I canceled the assignment. I cancel. It's not gonna come from out of my mouth. It's not gonna come from out of my spirit. It's not gonna come from me because I came to break the curse. I was born to break. I'm 
let you do it. So, 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 I'm at the end of me. I come to that point in me. I come to that point in me where I'm sick of the foolishness. I'm sick of me. I'm sick of those things that come. I'm sick of the devil always. Complete in him. It only comes in him. Hara Bobosha is complete in him. No matter how you dress it up, no matter how you dress it up, God come to judge the heart. And see, he hear, he hear the idle words. He hear what you say when ain't nobody around. He hear what you don't say and what you think. And that's how he's judging us. He said, be holy. Be holy because I'm holy. Be complete in him. Uh-huh. That gives him glory. Mm-hmm. B, make up your mind to change. B, mm -hmm. make up your mind to do it different. Mm -hmm. B, make up your mind to reposition yourself. B, mm -hmm. make up your mind to keep your deliverance. Make up your mind to walk in healing. Make up your mind to believe God no matter what and no matter how it looks. Make up your mind. That's your part. That's our part. That's what we do. Because here we are. Lord, lift us where we belong. Mm -hmm. And we'll go. Mm -hmm. Lift If you lift us, God, we'll go. Mm, uh -huh. But he's calling for it in the house. In the house. Mm -hmm. Not just one person. In the house. You may have got up, but he's calling for the house to be saved again from some things. Saved out of some stuff. Resaved. Uh -huh. To shed the old man and walk into the new. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we haven't reached it. We haven't reached it. It's so much more to who God is. It's so much more to who he really is. We haven't touched the surface, but it's wide. The door is wide open. All we got to do is run in. All we got to do is run in. All we got to do is run in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I've offended anybody... If I've offended, if I've said something to somebody to hurt you or offend you, I'm sorry. Because I have a charge to keep. I have things to do. <laughs> and if you don't want to go, then I can't let you hinder me. If you don't want to go, I, I can't let the unforgiveness, I can't. Mm, I, if you want to, I'm, I'm, I'm openly apologizing if you, mm, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be mature, perfect, <clears throat> in him. I'm going to strive to be mature, perfect, in him. Philippians 3 said, not, not that I already know it, not that I already have attained him. But each day I get up and every day that I open my eyes, it's a new day that I get to learn about who he is. Because I don't know him like I should. I need, listen, where I am now, I need more. And if when I lose that insight, I close the door to my growth. When I lose that insight, I close the door. And God is saying, keep it open. Because I want to give you more. I want to be that water that flows, that well that springs up inside of you, that flows inside of you. I, I want to be that well. I want to be that living water. So if my actions have offended you, mm, if my thoughts, because they jacked up sometimes, Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. We don't say everything we think. And oh, come on. <laughs> Sometimes it's crazy. 
Sometimes, sometimes if people could put a screen up to see what we thinking, you wouldn't even think we saved. Come on. You, you know, calling folks stupid and crazy. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. That's, that's, that's for God. That's, that's for God. Uh-huh. Because see. Without God, I can't even do it. I can't even be complete. I listen, the more God I get, the stupider I get. Come on, I I, I want to be stupid right there because I don't want to know nothing. I want God to know everything through me. Rabba Sirumusa. I wanna I wanna be able to recognize him when I see him. When he when he come in and he whisper, I want to be able to recognize him. Glory to God and without question. I don't want to question, is it God? I want to know, is it God? And it requires something from me. So we have to make up our mind that we'll go with you. Make a, listen, listen. My journey has not been easy. My journey, I, my journey has not been easy. Some of the things that I stand and live with other people would have lost their mind. And I'm not tooting my horn. I'm tooting God's horn because had it not been for the presence of God, I would not be here. So, 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 so no matter what, I, I, I got a few problems that I have given over to God. I don't let the enemy shut my mouth now because I used to stay. Somebody, but no matter what I know, if I go forth anyway, he can do something even with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll do it. I'll do it. So I sit and write. I, I I got notes and notes and notes and notes and notes, and that's why your pastor pushed me so much because she know that it's in me. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. So that's why I repent so much to God because I haven't stepped into a place where I know that He has called me to. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you in here. I'm in here and you too. That's all right. I don't mind telling my business. I don't mind. So I continue to seek God. Sometimes when I start out in prayer, I end up with a cry because that cry is, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. Give me more of you. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't do it like you told me to do it. God, I'm sorry. Uh, Give me a spirit of repentance, God. Give me that spirit of repentance. And every time I open up my mouth, you take me right to where I disappointed you, God. You take me right to that place where I didn't bring you glory. And I repent to you. Quickly, that's why David was who he was because he was a mess without God. But with God, he was God's man. So, the spirit of repentance, I try to keep it because in a house like this where it's prophetic, in a house like this, in a house like this where it's none but leaders, the enemy work in pride. And if you sit there and say you don't have no pride, you a liar. That's pride. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You need to repent for pride. Always. Always. It's always in, in, in leadership. Uh-huh. Because God gives on us, us an authority and, and we get to tell people some things. We get to say some things. And sometimes we don't always get it right. We don't always get it right because we're human. But there are things that we could do. Repent for pride. Repent for where you didn't allow God to cut away. You didn't allow God Mm. You didn't allow God to whoop you because you needed a whooping. You needed a whooping in that place so that you wouldn't do it again. And you wouldn't let God whoop you. <laughs> uh-huh. that, it's called chasing. And the words say he chastens who he loves. And if he don't chasten you, you a bastard. If he don't whoop you, if he don't whoop your tail for what you done wrong, you ain't none of his. 
Stop always trying to make it a spiritual thing. It's not a spiritual thing. It's God whooping your tail because you're wrong. It is what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. When I'm wrong, he whooped me. He would listen, and if you a teacher, if you te- if you do this right here, you you get it worse than the one in the pew. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. You oh, you get it worse than that because you a teacher of my word. I'ma whoop you even that much the more. Mm hmm. Uh huh. He calls us to a place of holiness. He's calling us to a place of worship. He's calling us to a place behind the veil, behind where we minister to him constantly. In ministering to him, he'll pour into us constantly. God said, get in that place. I'm waiting on you. See, yeah. I'm repeating what you yeah. said. I, this is what he gave me. Mm-hmm. I'm, God said, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I brought you from one place one place to another here we are and we're here again uh, we're here again but this time we got to cross over this time we can't play with it god said if, if, if you limping do it with the limp ain't that right mother burns <laughs> do it with the limp do it but show god don't have nothing to do with people show god Show God that you'll do it and you'll trust him for the rest. And you'll trust him for the rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the room and you haven't repented, God says do it now. Mm. Not to me. To maybe the person that you've offended. And if that's God, you best be repentant. Because mm-hmm. he made space for us today. I, I never would have got up if it had not been for my spiritual mother. I wouldn't have moved. I would have took the mic and repented. Mm-hmm. Because I know that God is calling me further. I know mm-hmm, that God, I should have been there and I'm here. Come on, tell the truth. Oh, I can. I can. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are our brother's keeper. Can I tell you that we are our brother's keeper? Uh Uh-huh. And we are all, we are supposed to hold each other in a higher stead than we hold ourselves. Can everybody say that they've done that? Mm -hmm. Can everybody say that they've done that? Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. Because I haven't always done it. Mm -hmm. I haven't always done it. I, I haven't always seen somebody sick and spoke healing. Mm-hmm. Went on past it in the hustle and bustle of my day. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's the truth. Yesterday I went to get my hair done. And I'm almost done. I just want to give this quick testimony. I'm almost done. I went to get finish getting my hair done. And... I met this lady, and we just really clicked it off, and I really understood that it wasn't about my hair. Because at first, my mind was saying, could you please just hurry up and get your fingers to braiding because I need you to be finished, and I don't want to have to go to work on Monday with a half a head. That, that was what I was thinking. And then God immediately checked me because it was a divine appointment. I had never met her before, and believe it or not, somebody referred me to her. I never, she never braided, never had her hands in my hair, and somebody referred me to her. And I just went, because you know, me, I wanted my hair done. So I went. And it was a divine appointment. Now, I got witnesses in the room, but most of my young life I, I spent in jail. I, I spent at the detention home. I was at the detention so much. One while, they knew me. They they left the light on for me. <laughs> Am I right, Barbara Burns? No, uh-huh, she she don't want me to tell it. It's all right. Anyway, I I spent a lot of time behind bars, locked up, 
I, it's kind of where I learned to pray because I, I tried it one time because I didn't want to be locked up so bad till I really prayed for real and heard the voice of God in the jail cell. I think I was 13. <laughs> and I, you know, I heard God's voice, but I, at that time I was running from some things and I, I had a, had a little more sense. I would have did it differently, but hey, there it is. God allowed me to go that way for a reason. And I had a probation officer at the time. Her name was Miss Douglas. I don't know if you remember that, Burns, but uh, the last time I went, <laughs> yes, I'm going to tell it. The last time I went to the detention home, because by the time I was 16, 17, whatever, I, I decided I would stop going because it was getting closer to that time where I would go to the big house, so I better slow down. <laughs> but uh, uh, I had, I came across a, um, a probation officer that took to me real good. She, she was, almost felt like she had to protect me. And she would come and see me constantly because I knew that my time was close. We got to court, and she argued the judge down about how not to send me away. And the referee Mazda sent me anyway. And she stood up and fussed at that judge. She walked me to the last, to the last place she could walk me without them legally telling her that she could not go. <laughs> She was one of the best probation officers that I had. I always remembered her because she made such a profound impact on my life uh, to the point that I, after that last time, I never went back to the detention home. I, you know, I, 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 never, I never went back. And so I met this lady yesterday. Uh, her last name was Douglas. And I was just sitting there talking. And I said, you know, I used to have this old probation officer. Her name was Miss Douglas. I used to love her to death. And I looked at your last name, and it made me think about her. I wish I knew where she was. I wish I knew what she was doing now. And I just loved her so much, much, and I was going on and on and on and on. And she got up from the table and walked into her bedroom and got a stack of pictures and laid them out. And there was Miss Douglas. And then she pulled out her cell phone. Auntie, I got somebody who want to talk to you. I lost my man. I got a chance to tell her just how much she meant to me how much she did for me. You know, she still got that same spirit of, well, did you go back? Did you, is you good? What you doing now? What you, you know, like a mother that's really bossy, you know, like me. <laughs> I, I laughed, but I understood her. She'll be here in a month to see me. <laughs> we... We're going to spend some time together on this side. Because <laughs> she saved. She saved. And she coming to spend some time with me. And I said that to say that sometimes we have to tell people what they mean to us. Wow, they can still hear it. We have to tell people how they have really impacted our life. Because if I look at each and every one of you, you have impacted my life some kind of way. And believe me, I was that child that needed leading. <laughs> I, I was that child that needed, you know, somebody. And each one of you have impacted my life, if I've never told you. Because, see, we're growing up, we're we going to be mature now. In my being mature, I, I'm going to show my wounds. I'm going to show. That's why I have to tell it. I, I, I need to show my wounds. And, and then all of my situations, I, you, listen, I, I wear them, but I don't wear them as heaviness. And all of my circumstances, even what I go through now, I wear them as a billboard. 
for God because they are a billboard to show the glory of God. They are a billboard to look, listen, I'm standing with this. I'm going to move with this. I'm going to be, I'm going to be God's girl with this regardless. I'm going to be God's girl with this. I'm not going to give up because it's not about me. It's about God in me. Mm. I'm not going to give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. If you hear and you know you're not in the place that you need to be, step it up. Make your declaration to God. Make your declaration today. Don't wait. Don't wait. Make your declaration that you're going to stay, even if you don't know what to do. Because sometimes that was my plight for years and years and years. I didn't know what to do. I had no clue what to do. I knew how to come and do what everybody else was doing. But it was not a relationship with God. To come to church every Sunday and just sit and hear the word and go back and never use it, it's not a relationship. It's, it's not a relationship with God. It's religion. <laughs> it's religion. We're all called to. We all should be becoming. This is a house of leaders. This is a house of prophets. That's why God deal with our mouth. Even Korah, whether she wants to recognize it or not. She's a prophetic person. She's a prophetic person. And if he ain't already, he'll deal with her mouth. Because we got to be careful what we say about ourselves. What we speak into our own situation. What we speak about somebody. What we speak over our children. Watch your temper. Watch your temper. Temper. Watch your temper. Watch speaking out of your flesh. Sometimes you got to be slow to speak. Ain't that what the words say? You got to take your time before you say a word. Because what you release, God's going to perform it or he's going to allow it to be performed. How about that? Careful. Speak how God wants you to speak. Speak it the way he wants you to speak. Tell your flesh to be quiet. Sometimes you have to tell it. Yeah, take, open that prophetic mouth, you leader you. And tell your flesh to be quiet so that God can take you up. It's your part. I love you. God loves you. And you can't do nothing about it. Amen. <laughs>